Amen. Amen. We have so far uncovered some beautiful truth in Revelation chapter 6. Mm -hmm. the, the white horse seen here going forth conquering and to conquer is a picture of Christ united with his people. We are likened to a horse according to Zechariah 10 verse 3. And this whole idea of going forth conquering and to conquer is a picture of what Christ brings to us through his righteousness, mm -hmm. through his life and his death for us. So we haven't finished with the white horse yet, but we are going to be primarily focusing on the next horse in this program, this session together. So, but I do want us to review just a little bit before we move on because there's a couple of things we missed and there's a couple of things we want to just maybe recap and then we'll move into the red horse and focus on that. But let's begin with a word of prayer, shall we? Jason, would you pray for us? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another day of study, Lord. We invite you to be here with us. Help us to understand the truths that you have in your precious word. Help us to uh, comprehend them and, and to be able to retain what we've studied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So let's read again Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Um, Yvonne, would you like to read those verses for sure. us? Sure. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So when we're looking at this, we're looking at all of these different symbols, and we notice that the white is something that represents righteousness throughout the book of Revelation. About 12 times that word is connected with Christ, with his people, with the robe of righteousness. And it's really important to see that because we're going to notice that later on these colors these other colored horses are identified with certain th images in Revelation that identify who it is. So we want to identify this white horse and we identify the, the color itself with things that are godly. Mm -hmm. And then the horse himself and the rider with the right, white horse in Revelation 19, verse 11. And then the bow we connected with the child being brought forth in Revelation 12. This is just review mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in Revelation 12. So the bow, the weapon is the message of Christ being brought forth as our savior. And then the crown, Stephanos, not diadem, Stephanos, which is a victor's crown. Mm. So this is all about victory. Mm -hmm. So far, God's people in the first section of the churches have been covered with kind of a defeat. I mean, they just, they need to overcome. They need to overcome. They need to overcome. Revelation 4 and 5 opens up with, with one who has overcome, Jesus, mm. the Lamb. And now Revelation 6 opens up with a people who connect with Jesus, and because they connect with Jesus, they get to overcome. Amen. Mm. We yep. can go oh, ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I just had a question about the four beasts. Would you mm -hmm. review what that is? So these four beasts are identified in Revelation chapter 4. And we look there in Revelation 4 at their identif identific identification, identification, an eagle, a calf, a lion, and a man. Now, these are kind of symbols of the work that they do. The beasts are living creatures. They're angels. Isaiah 6 brings that out. These living creatures are around the throne. And angels work in harmony with the Holy Spirit. And they do work like they come in the form of men. They come to this earth to minister, and that would be the symbol of an ox, to minister. Every man in the Old Testament had his ox, like we all have our car, you know, and the ox plows the field and does the work. Mm -hmm. So they're ministering. They're coming in the form of human beings. They fly like eagles, and um, they also have authority. The lion is, is a symbol of authority, of kingship, authority. They have authority from heaven. So when we go about our daily business, when we're doing Bible studies, when we're doing evangelism, when we're doing outreach, when we're opening the Word of God, when we're taking people to the book of Revelation, angels are actually working in harmony with us. Mm -hmm. And angels are bidding people, touching people's hearts and bidding people, hey, check this out. This guy, there's some stuff here you need to come and see mm -hmm. this, come and see this, come and see this. Trying to break down that fear and open up that door, that avenue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So angels are working together with Jesus. Um, come and see. Come and see. And I think one of the points that uh, I think is really uh, important for us to understand is that when we uh, remember, we, we talked about in the last program how, you know, this rider on the white horse goes forth conquering and to conquer. Yes. And we talked about the years that we were conquered by mm -hmm. Christ, you know, mm -hmm. where Christ overcame, you know, um, pulled us out of darkness and um, made us when you conquer someone, they become your prisoner. Mm. You know, and, mm -hmm. and Paul even writes, you know, he, he calls himself the prisoner 
of the Lord. What does that mean? He's Amen. been conquered by the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I become a prisoner of the Lord, when, when the Lord conquers me, mm -hmm. then his mission becomes my mission. Amen. So now I am to go forth conquering. When I go give a Bible study, when I'm witnessing, uh, you know, to other people mm -hmm. of the Lord and his goodness, the goal, the mission is to conquer, is to conquer, is to, you know, uh, uh, bring that person out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Yeah. The, the connotation of a prisoner makes people think like, oh, I, I, I don't have any will. Right. Mm -hmm. But that, but, but the real deal is we are going to be a slave or servant to someone, yeah. either to mm -hmm. God or to Satan. So it's not as though, you know, we're not going to be, we have our own, we do have a choice. We can go with God or we can go yeah. with Satan. Yeah. That's, that's where choice is. Yeah. So the, the word prisoner, if we say, well, you're going to be a prisoner, like any inmate that's watching this will be like, oh, I'm not going to be a prisoner. Yeah. But, the, but the whole idea is you're going to be conquered by either God or the enemy, yeah. Satan. And, and, and think of it like this. The Bible in the Old Testament uh, describes uh, that term, uses the term prisoners of hope. Mm -hmm. Mm. Prisoners of hope. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different concept yeah. than being a now prisoner. Now that switches it. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, if I could be a prisoner mm -hmm. to joy and happiness, mm -hmm. man, lock me up. Yes. See, that, you know? that prisoner, it, it does have a very negative connotation. Like a, for me, even if you put the hope in there, it's just, I hear prisoner. Mm -hmm. and so that really just... It, Here's another it, word, it well. captive. Captive. I am captive to my wife's love. Yes. I am captivated by her. Absolutely. Come on I, I now. Like, I like Come that. on now. Well, we're right. talking about... It's a love story. It's a love story. It's a love story. Yeah. It's a love story. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So when, when, the, when Paul talks about being a prisoner, he's talking about being captive because the Bible de defines God as love. Mm -hmm. So we're captive to love. Yeah, I'm, you're a prisoner of I'm love. love. Oh, man, yeah. lock me up. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you locked up right now? Uh, you getting there. Yeah, Tiffany. You're <laughs> locked up? All right. Yeah. Now that word means something to you, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm a prisoner. That's, that doesn't sound half as bad. <laughs> take me prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> take, Tiffany, take me. He's yeah. Me up. yeah, that's good. Good stuff. Good. That's yeah. good. Uh, the other question that I had um, was the phrase conquering and to conquer, and that suggested sanctification to me, like this, mm -hmm. this process, this lifelong process where um, I, I've, I've overcome this sin by the power of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. not my own. And then now the next phase, like I still have this, this, and this yeah. to deal with, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, so Jesus came conquering mm -hmm. and to continue to, as I walk that journey, yeah. mm -hmm. continuing to conquer. Yeah. Am I, is that, yeah, absolutely. is that the right interpretation absolutely. of this, of this phrase? And, and if you take this back to, uh, you know, Revelation 12, 11, they overcame him. Mm -hmm. Another word for overcome, conquered. Mm -hmm. mm. They conquered by Same the, Greek by, word. Yeah. By the word mm -hmm. of the lamb, mm -hmm. by the blood of the lamb okay. and the word of their testimony. Mm -hmm. If you go back to the seven churches, what is Jesus appealing in, to each of those churches? What is he saying to him that, that overcome. mm -hmm. overcomes? Okay, mm -hmm. how do we overcome? Come and see. Mm -hmm. Come and see. Mm -hmm. You overcome by the word. Mm -hmm. So the answer to the question, the answer to the dilemma of, mm -hmm. you know, to him that overcometh mm -hmm. is found in that white horse. And that mm -hmm. overcoming means not only overcoming, you know, others, you know, bringing them into a, to the gospel truth, but it means overcoming yourself, mm -hmm. you know, overcoming uh, the, the, the tendencies that we have to, you know, to do evil, to do wrong. So the Bible mm -hmm. says, do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil, evil with good. With good. Mm -hmm. That's a really good verse. Conquer. That's in Re Re uh, Romans chapter Romans, 12, yeah. right? Yep. 21. Romans chapter 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to reference that verse because we're going to be moving into the next horse and the next horse is going to be an opportunity for us to use that verse. Yeah. Do not be overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So mm -hmm. as Ivers described this overcoming as it relates to us and as it relates to an evangelism, there's also going to be these other obstacles identified as horses, a red horse, a black horse, a pale horse, that are going to come in or into our path and that we're going to need to overcome. And again, they represent history. Primarily, they represent history. But if we don't get the history right, 
how can we make the application to our time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the history has to be right first. Yeah. And then we see the principles and how they apply to us today. Mm -hmm. yeah. If the history of the white horse is Antichrist, then what principles, how, do the, how does anything in that horse, white horse era, anything in that white horse description apply to us? Mm -hmm. If the history of the red horse isn't accurate, how can we make the application to us? So the book of Revelation points out the history, identifies the history so that we can see that history and then say, aha, wow, that same history has some lessons for us today. Mm -hmm. What lessons do we have to learn from this today? Mm -hmm. So Jason, take us, take us into this next horse, uh, Revelation 6 verses 3 and 4. All right. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. All right. Any questions there? What do we got that? Should we move on to the black horse real quick? We can't wait. <laughs> hey there. One thing you notice right away is that it's the second beast says, come and see. When he had opened the second seal, excuse me, I heard the second beast say, come and see. So immediately we understand that angels are involved again. Mm -hmm. And this not, is not like saying, oh, the first angel, the first beast, the first living creature, the first angel that came and said, come and see the first horse. It's, a, it's the same one. That first angel says, come and no, it's a second angel. Mm. So this is deliberate. God is telling us that there are angels mm. involved. Four is not there's four angels in heaven and, you know, there's, you know, one of them came and then he went back and the second one came. No, four is a number that talks about the totality. It's, it's a number that represents north, south, east, and west. Mm. The four angels are holding back the four winds means there's angels just belting the earth, just covering the earth, holding back the forces of evil. Mm. Thousands times then thousands and thousands of thousands of angels are ministering to us and they're involved in this one after another coming. One, two, three, four, coming to encourage us to come and check out the word of God and the truths of salvation. So these four horses then would encompass in some way the whole globe. Mm -hmm. In other words, these four horses yes. tell us of um, the conditions, you know, of the whole world. You know, every one of us, we talked about it, yes. is going to represent or is going to be symbolized by one of these four horses. Mm. Yeah. One of the things that I liked um, that we brought out in, in the last um, session that we had was that the seals, the seal is opened and that doesn't mean you go to the next one and that's the end of that first mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a continuum. Mm -hmm. So the first seal is open mm -hmm. and it stays open. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is open and it stays open. Yes. And to me that, I mean, I, again, it's something that I had never considered before. And it's just, it's we're going to really see that even more as we get into this, yeah. because when we, when I didn't, first of all, I mean, for example, we've identified the white horse. Right. Well, did Jesus only go forth to conquer in the early Christian church and that's it? Or does he continue on to the very end of time? Right. Continues okay. on. Now we've got the red horse. Whatever the, the characteristics are of this horse and what the activities are, is this just going to be in this time frame or is it going to continue on? That's what the question we have to ask on each mm. one of these. Mm. And we're going to see that, yes, these continue on. Mm. These seals are opening up the mysteries that compass the globe from here to the very end, from their time frame to the very end of time. Mm. And, and as Ivor said, they represent every single human being comes under one of these characteristics. Mm -hmm. mm. So the, the application is... So is what's the simple. red? Yeah. Interesting. Last, last time we talked about how the white is used in the Bible in relation to, especially in Revelation, uh, a dozen times in relation to things that have to do with God and his people. And so that's how we connected the white horse to Christ rather than to Antichrist. Mm -hmm. The red, however, is connected in Revelation chapter 12 to the dragon the great red dragon. Mm -hmm. So now we have a color that is connected directly with the dragon. And we know the dragon, Satan, the devil, is the one behind Antichrist. Mm -hmm. So really, if you want to identify the work of Antichrist, you want to identify the work of the devil, here it is right here. Mm -hmm. Any religion that persecutes is in harmony with the activities of the dragon, of Satan, of the devil. And, and let me add this, James, not only any religion, but any power period mm. that persecutes mm -hmm. mm. is in connection point. With, with the devil. Good point. That color persecuting red. Persecuting power. Mm -hmm. So when you think of red, you know, when it comes to the Bible, what's the first thing we think of? 
blood. Mm -hmm. right. That's the color of blood. Mm -hmm. right. So here you have this combination of dragon mm -hmm. and blood. Mm -hmm. what, what does that tell you? It tells you of persecution. persecution. Yeah. Here is, a, here is a, a, a time period, because remember we're looking at time periods here. Yes. So the first time period, the gospel going forth. But that's going to be followed by a time period of persecution. Mm -hmm. And guess what? If you were to take that second seal and go back and check it against the second church, which was the church of Smyrna, mm -hmm. which we discovered was the persecuted church, we mm. go, oh, look at this. It's a match. Right. Yep. We're not coming up with something, you know, out in left field. Mm -hmm. We've got a match here. Right. And that match tells us we're mm -hmm. on the right path. Right. Amen. So we've got the first century church to about 100 AD or so, and then we've got this persecution that's following. So this has taken us into the second and third centuries. There was heavy persecution in the church of Smyrna. We even saw a 10-day, day for a year, 10-year period from 303 to 313. Diocletian, boom, intense persecution took place right there. And that was just before we got into the compromise that began to take place in the church. And that was, of course, taking us into the, to the next couple of churches. But right here, we have the same thing taking place in the horses. So as Myra said, we're following that same pattern. The red is representing, well, look what it says here. It says, and he, he that sat there on was given um, power to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another. Mm. So right here, you have in the very words, you have this idea of peace. Now, I, I looked up this word peace, and let me just give you the definition of it, because it really uh, makes a, uh, a close connection to the gospel. The word peace here in the Greek uh, is, means the Messiah's peace, the way that leads to peace or salvation. Mm. So this is, this is, in a sense, this is identifying the fact that this persecution came specifically against Messiah's people, mm -hmm. Christians. Mm -hmm. And that's what we find the record indicating. Mm. You know, there's a lot of persecution that goes on in the world yeah. you know, all of the time. But in this period of time, Christianity had developed and grown under the apostolic age to become a worldwide known religion from this, this tiny, you know, little, who is this Messiah? Who's this Jesus Christ? Who do these followers claim to be? Oh, they're from Nazareth. That's, that's nothing. It'll go away. You know, just let it, it'll go, it'll go away, you know, mm -hmm. but it didn't, it grew. Mm -hmm. And Paul says the gospel was preached to every creature under heaven. And it was in Nero's household. It was everywhere. And so now it becomes a problem. So in this context of the apostolic age, we have this heavy persecution coming against it. They're not going to just let this go away. They're going to try and kill it and destroy it. Let me mention here, let's remember some of the things we talked about in the, in the last program, specifically the location uh, where these seals are unfolding, mm. unfolding at the table of showbread, mm -hmm. right, which is on the sides of the north. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And remember, we saw that the, uh, uh, according to Isaiah 14, 13, Lucifer wanted to sit on the sides Side of the north. Of the north. Mm -hmm. He wanted to sit on the mount of the congregation, mm -hmm. which is located on the sides of the north. So what we saw there is that the seven uh, seals are a depiction of this battle, uh, you know, between God and Satan, this controversy over the mount of the congregation. Mm -hmm. Satan wants to destroy or to rule over the mount of the congregation. Mm -hmm. So in the first seal, you have the word of God going forth. That is how the mount of the congregation overcomes. Mm -hmm. So what do you have in the second seal? You basically have Satan going after the mount of the congregation saying, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to make things so difficult for mm -hmm. you that you will let go of the word of God. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Roman persecutions were really all about. By mm -hmm. the way, we need to, and I think we need to stress this here because we're going to see that persecution happens also under the, under the fourth uh, seal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are two different persecutions. So the persecution under the second seal is by pagan Rome. Okay, this is a, we hate God mm -hmm. and you must hate God too. We're going to find that the persecution, in other words, Satan switches, puts on a mask yeah. mm -hmm. under the, the persecution we're going to find on the fourth seal. We'll get mm -hmm. to that, you know, in, um, in a future program. But you have this open anti-God entity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is persecuting the people of God, saying, mm -hmm. let go of the word of God or we're going to kill you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that we, you were talking about the word peace, and uh, this is quite interesting. I, I just want to read it because I just pulled a couple mm -hmm. of sentences up online. But um, when it talks about uh, power was given to him to take peace from the earth, 
Um, during this time period, interestingly enough, there was something called the Pax Romana. And let me just read a little bit about it. Um, two sentences very quickly. It says, the term Pax Romana, which literally means Roman peace, refers to the time period from 27 BC to 180 CE in the Roman Empire. Mm. It says, the Pax Romana initiated by Caesar Augustus quelled crime, allowed for the development of roads through the, throughout the empire, and gave citizens the leisure to think about religious matters. Mm. Well, when in, under the second seal, when it says peace was taken, mm. when this Pax Romana ends, that's when the persecution of Christians... I mean, there when was some end? persecution that ends around 180 okay. CE. So yeah. there was some persecution, was persecution going before on before. That, but, yeah. but after it ends... That's right in the middle of that time frame. That's right. That's yeah. when it really picks up mm -hmm. and you find this heavy persecution. So it's just very, I think, significant that the words here, it peace is. was taken from the earth that they might kill one another, mm -hmm. is mentioned Wow. during this time period. Now, now Yvonne just took her glasses off. When she takes her glasses off, that, that indicates she's going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> like, you are observant. Let's do it. <laughs> well, no, I just find it so interesting that, that history, and it, it kind of reinforces, but, you know, the Bible, when this was written, this was, this was written before that period. So yes. it's just, you know, it just Good reinforces yeah. how accurate the Bible is. Absolutely. And this is just one little verse. This is yeah. one little prophecy yeah. in a book of prophecy, in a Bible that's filled with prophecy. Yes. And all of it is accurate. I mean, just try to wrap your mind around that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just try to wrap your mind around. This is incredible when we think about this. All of this prophecy, and, and here in the book of Revelation, layers, layers. La I'm going to say it once. I'm going to say it this way. Let, let's say it again now, and it's layers on top. Let's say it again now, and it layers on top. The images and symbols all being different, but each one of them bringing more to the table. For example, you know, we talked about red horse. We talked about blood. Well, there's a famous saying from the time of this persecution that the blood of martyrs was seed for the gospel, mm. which is going to take us into our next horse because that's why we have these, these next horses, yeah. this transition taking place. Mm -hmm. This compromise had to take place because it didn't work. Yeah. And here's another point that I think is really significant. God has one way. It's white. It's pure. It's true. It's holy. It's, it's undeviating. Mm -hmm. Satan has one way, then he has another way, then he has another way. See, he's, he's going to use yeah. any and every means he can. You know, he's, this doesn't work, I'm going to try this. If this doesn't work, I'm going to try this. And sometimes we make a mistake as believers to think, oh, this is God and this is Satan. Mm -hmm. No, no. This is God and this is Satan, this is Satan, this is Satan. This is, he's, mm -hmm. he's working through all that stuff. Mm -hmm. He's even, as we'll see, he's even working through religious type. That's why we said, mm -hmm. you know, Jimmy Carter once said this. He said, the religion of Christ never persecuted anyone. Mm. The religion of Christ never persecuted That's anyone. Mm -hmm. So when we look at this, and by the way, in the Roman Empire, in the pagan Roman Empire, Christians were looked upon as atheists. Mm -hmm. They were looked upon as non-religious. Yeah. Mm. That, that was the issue. The religion of the Roman Empire, the pagan religion, was the religion of worshiping the gods. Mm -hmm. And the Christians wouldn't worship the gods. Mm. They wouldn't burn the incense. They wouldn't acknowledge. They wouldn't bow down to the emperor. They were atheists. Mm. So they, they actually, the definition of the word atheist back in that time mm -hmm. was a denial of the Roman gods mm -hmm. specifically. Mm -hmm. ah. So Christians were, were viewed as atheists. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy. Wow. Yeah, it is. I want to mention a point. Well, go ahead, Yvonne. Well, I, I just wanted to clarify one thing because I don't want any confusion about, um, you know, we have the different colors of the horses and the and each one represents something mm -hmm. and the white represents God and purity and all that. I, I just want our viewers to know that everybody is included under the flag of purity mm -hmm. because it it could be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And so we would just want everybody to every nation, every kindred, every tongue and people mm -hmm. represented under that kind of flag. Mm -hmm. It's a flag. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not one race. Right. It's not one color. 
Mm -hmm. right. It's what that represents. And it's, it's right. important to make that distinction. Yeah. Well, it is. And here's, a, here's another way to add to that distinction. That white horse represents Christ's righteousness that he mm -hmm. gives to us. Yes. Right. So no, no one race has it. Yeah. Yes. Nobody has it's that. Yeah. It's just Christ. That. It's yeah. just Christ. Because some yeah. people will misinterpret that, that. That is that which represents yeah. Christ and Christ gives it to us. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. nobody so, has it yeah. in and of themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to mention something point. that I think is, is crucial to understand as well, is that, uh, you know, the Bible says, thinking not strange concerning the fiery, or colors fire, red, red. Yeah. the fiery trial that is to mm -hmm. try you. Mm -hmm. when you. When you mount that white horse, or when you are become symbolized by that white horse because mm -hmm. now you've given your life to Christ, mm -hmm. just know that there's a red horse around the corner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm waiting to, to make mm -hmm. life so miserable for you mm -hmm. that you'll give up the white horse, mm -hmm. that you'll get He wants you to dismount. He wants you to move away from the righteousness of Christ. Mm -hmm. So what we see happening in the second and third century uh, uh, after Christ, we can see happening on a very personal level. You know, when I mm -hmm. accepted the Lord, I was so happy. I thought things were going to be great. And then mm -hmm. as soon as I accept the Lord, what persecution begins to come, you know, my job, mm -hmm. my family, you know, friends I used to hang out with, all of a sudden now, you know, all these, you know, issues and trials are coming to me, but know that that is the process because Satan is real and he's going to try to get you away from the white horse. If yes. nothing's happening to you, you got to kind of question that. Like, you do. Uh, yeah. what, what am I doing in my <laughs> life that Satan's leaving me alone? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that you would say that because this year was proclaimed the year of evangelism. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you that so much has broken out mm. against mm -hmm. people here at 3ABN mm -hmm. and all that mm. this year, not wow. that, I mean, we were doing it all along, but yeah. now there's this real Intensive. concerted effort yeah. mm -hmm. to, to really focus on evangelism mm -hmm. and bam. Yeah. I mean, Satan has just really been waging war. So mm -hmm. I not know strange. that. That's mm -hmm. right. Make it not strange. All right. We're, down, we're out of time. We've got about a minute left. Uh, Jason, close us out with, with uh, our, our viewers and how they can send their questions into somewhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> somewhere <laughs> well, if, if they have any questions, they can go to sss at 3abn.org. Send an email to sss okay. at 3abn.org. Salvation in Signs and Symbols? Salvation and symbols and, and signs. signs. Yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to remember this. I, you know, I'm going to remember this at some point. Um, but we need to close out with prayer. So close out with prayer, would you, Jason? Sure. Please? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing us with a powerful study and, and teaching us about uh, the four horses and, and the, the angels and all the symbolism and the re rep what everything represents, Lord. Uh, we ask that you uh, be with us in our, our future studies and uh, help us to... Uh, have a firm understanding mm -hmm. of this and help our viewers to have a firm understanding of this mm -hmm. and to study it out for themselves as well. Thank you so much for blessing this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.